Alright guys, so mainly what I want to do today is just kind of go, go over a couple things about Civil War blanket rolls. Uh, not the hobo rolls or back rolls or the kind of more officer styled blanket rolls that you see sometimes. Uh, more along the lines of a mule collar that is, I guess you could say, kind of more of a classic looking blanket roll. But I've seen it done a lot of ways, but a couple ways that I've done that really worked for me and I think uh, looks good I have not seen done or really represented well out there in demonstration videos and stuff so I mean it's not that different but there is a couple little tips and quirky things that I want to illustrate so basically what you have in front of you right now is a blanket obviously and under it is gum blanket and reason for that being the first meal collar I'm going to do is involving the gum blanket and for that you know you just need blanket gum blanket and then one piece of rope strap or anything this is just a blanket roll strap to tie it up with at the end but first thing you're going to want to do is fold it kind of hot dog style just fold it in half like this I have it a little more uh, off this way since the gum blanket is a different size, slightly different size than the blanket itself. So, you know, just kind of get that as squared up as you can. And I'm going to be doing a few different uh, types here today, so if you're worried I'm not going to cover something, don't be. So, once you have it in half like that, you are basically going to, and I know this isn't going to match up, we're going to just fold that, the rest of it, the gum blanket right over it like that, and then bring it over, fold it again, and one more time. And so now you got this kind of long flat caterpillar looking thing and what we're going to do now is basically twist this and to do that you're going to want you know something to hold this down here while you twist from the other end and then grab the two ends and bring it together so for this uh, I think I might use the bed post over here just to kind of hold it down And it can be whatever you want, but it just needs to be something that can hold the other side. It's easier if you have this with two people sometimes, so it may not be the most practical way, but you'll see why. And you're just going to twist it just like that. And then you get your strap and out from under, bring it around this. In fact, it might go the other way. Yeah, that works better. Because you don't really want anything kind of sticking out or flapping out uh, up by your head because that can get annoying. And then just take like roll strap. I like to kind of double over here just for a tighter, tighter kind of fit. Okay, so as you can see on now, I got my traps on, or uh, some of them anyway. And when you're putting on the this kind of mule collar, or any mule collar for that matter, you always want to have it on the side of your haversack. All right. So I don't know if you can see that. No, you can't see that. So, yeah. so you always want to have it on the side of your haversack, just so it's out of the way. I can still access my cartridge box, still get to my cartridge box, still access my cab pouch, bayonet, and put your canteen on. You just anytime you're wearing knapsack or blanket roll or anything, you always want to 
put the canteen on last so you can always access it when you're on the march. That just goes right over like that. Then you got it on and you can see it's a very good fighting position but you can still you know access caps and do everything you need to do. You can still shoulder your rifle and standard carry of shoulder arms is still accessible. Though you can't do right shoulder shift. I can't do it in here anyway because low ceilings. But you can't do right shoulder shift with this, which in battle doesn't really matter. That's why I'm saying this works really good if you have to go into combat with a blanket. The mule collar uh, usually works pretty good. And the key with this is, so it's not flimsy or um, moving around a lot, is twisting it. That's the big thing here is you twist it. And I do that with mainly uh, all my blanket rolls. And if you twist it, it kind of gives, I don't know, kind of like a little more friction on your shoulder and stuff. So it doesn't slide around as much or it doesn't, uh, you know, spin this way or anything as much. You know, I can, you know, move all over the place and it's not going to, it's not going to go anywhere. And since it, also because it's uh, twisted, it's a little tighter and it's not as bulky and big. And... So yeah, this is just this is one way you can do the mule collar from the side again, back, and again, still access cartridge box, still do standard carry position. You need to still, you know, T and get the firing position, which that yeah, changed the camera again. All right, another thing you can do is basically do the same thing you did as with the gun blanket only this time we're doing it with a shelter half and I mean there's diff there's different combinations that you can do these systems with with shelter halves, blankets, extra blankets, gun blankets all these kinds of things, shirts, whatever um, this is just a couple you know, you improvise off of ideas you see here and ways you see here so basically what I've done again is just I've already kind of started a little bit. I've done the hot dog fold with the blanket again. And all we're going to do here is basically the same thing. I'm going to take it. I'm just doing it from a different side just because. But shelter half is on the outside because whenever you can, you want to try and protect your wool blanket because that's, if anything, one of the things you want to try and keep dry and just just take care of it and soldiers during the war would have felt the same way uh, of course you want to take care of you know it's the shelter halves your sleeping cores you want to take care of that too as well as your gumbling you want to take care of all your gear but wool blanket is very important so again I've just I've done the same thing again I folded it and then folded it again you saw that and we're just gonna do the twist again, and I'll show you what to do if you want to. Uh, well, you got to carry your gun blanket too. I'll show you what to do with that also, and you can do the same vice versa the other way with your shelter half. So put that again underneath something to weigh it down while you twist it. it can be somebody standing. It can be a rock. Uh, heavy knapsack really does not matter and in terms of what direction you uh, you twist it uh, that doesn't matter too much either uh, you just want to twist it in a direction that you know no, no flaps are going to be wanting to come undone uh, everything's nice and tight and you know you you can if the if the shelter itself comes unravel a little bit that's okay you know it's just it's just what happens but anytime you can you want to try and keep a nice nice tight blanket roll so then you take the strap do it from underneath up top again doesn't matter 
you just want to make sure it's nice and tight. All right, so now this is a little bit different aside from, you know, because you still have the standard uh, twisted mule collar, only it's with the shelter half on top now. But what you're going to do with the gum blanket, and I've seen tons of reenactors do this over the years. I've heard that it works very well. I've tried it only a couple times, but the main problem is my belt was too loose, so it kept sliding out. And that's the thing you got to make sure is that your belt is nice and tight when you do this. And what that something is, take the gum blanket, and it's all folded up. Probably should have done this on the ground. It's all folded up in a nice rectangle that you can flap over. And essentially, try to do this in midair. You're just going to basically drape it over, over your belt. And that way, you know, if you really need to, you can access it fairly easily. And so now you put it on. Stuff in my pockets. Get it on. Get your belt nice and tight. You know, high-ish if you can. I can't because there's crap in my, my pockets here. But you know, you want to get that nice and high. And though it might push your cartridge box a little bit to the side. Might push your cartridge box a little bit to the side. You can see that's that's there. It's if I need it, I can pull it right out. I still have access to anything. And then you know, get on haversack, of course, blanket roll. And all depending on the size of your blanket will depend on how tight how tight your blanket roll is. You know, like I have a fairly moderately sized blanket. Canteen over that. I have a pretty moderately sized blanket, so mine always ends up really nice and, and tight up to me, which is great because it doesn't, you know, it doesn't move around. The thing that's moving around the most is my haversack. But since that's kind of in between my bayonet, which kind of prohibits it, and also straps under a lot of things and it's in between the blanket roll, the canteens on top of it. This isn't filled but if it was filled that would be some weight on that. So that would work really good. And again as you can see gum blanket back there easily accessible. And the thing I was saying uh, before you can do the same thing vice versa if you're doing the gum blanket on, uh, on your wool blanket and then just put your shelter half back here. So you can do it vice versa. I just showed it to you this way. And again, full mobility of all your positions. You know, you can cap off. You can do whatever you need to do. Standard carries. Uh, all kinds of stuff. And with the canteen, since it's over all your stuff, you can easily, you know, get it up and take a drink when you need to. It's not under things where you're wrestling to get to it. And that's the same policy that goes with knapsacks, blanket rolls, anything. Canteen is always the last thing on because you want to be able to get to that. So there's that and I'll show you what to do with extremely long blankets. Alright, one last thing. If you have an extremely large blanket, uh, which I know some people do, for instance this one is what you would call an issue blanket uh, from Fall Creek I believe uh, and it's pretty darn big so the only difference I would say with these is instead of folding it instead of folding it uh, hot dog style fold it hamburger style fold it this way because if it's uh, a little bit extra wide too which it should be if it's you know bigger in general then that should get you roughly the same length 
So this is what we're going to do. We're going to fold it hamburger style. My rag is getting in my way. So you fold it just like that. This carpet is doing funky things. So you fold a hamburger style, get that all set, and then you're just going to kind of keep going in that same direction to, you know, make up for length and width and all these kind of things. And I'm not going to do anything special with this, like adding a gum blanket or shelter half to it. I'm just going to do a standard blanket roll, which I'm still going to twist it because when you twist it as opposed to just rolling it, it's a lot tighter and it just reduces the amount of space it takes up on your person. So, one more time. And now you're going to do the twisty thing. Alright, once you got it all twisted, uh, it comes out at least this one comes out to the same um, length as the other ones, and all depending on where did I put this? depending on how big of a person you are, how broad a torso, um, will depend on whether this method will or will not work for you. So, yeah. Alright, so I'm not bothering getting on any of my traps, this is just kind of a sizing thing. But haversack, you know, would be over here. Let me put that on. For someone like me, I'm about six foot. Uh, Semi-skinny guy. This works uh, perfectly. It's the same tightness as uh, the previous blanket rolls I showed you with the smaller blankets. Doing it hot dog style, you do this one hamburger style all the way. They'll get the same length and the it'll still be nice and tight to your body. So, and I'll show you another way to do it if you're a taller person or a wider person here. So, one other way you can do this is folding it diagonally, which if you did it hot dog style, it would come out with a, a pretty long tail. I know a lot of people, or some people don't like that. So to try and eliminate that, you're gonna just do it kind of diagonally like this. Make the two corners kind of level with each other. You can kind of see that's under the bed, but two corners level with each other and uh, fairly tight spaces, a little difficult to do. But now you're going to make those line up. Then you're going to bring them down to about there. And then what you could what some people could do if they did a hot dog style are like just fold the ends in but that usually doesn't work because it's it's pretty square and it allows it to slip out easily but if you do it like this and then tuck them in you have these different layers to kind of hold it so in this kind of V shape here you're going to take the tail and just tuck it right up in there and by using this method you can adjust it to really uh, whatever length you, you want. Like that's probably too short for some people, so you you know bring it out a little bit. Same with the other side before you fold it again, and then again, and then twist it. And as a finished product, as you can see, again this would not fit me because I'm not that big but for a bigger person or taller person you have plenty of extra space and no long tail so thanks for watching the video and hope you picked on picked up something useful thanks see you next time